Today I'm going to talk about when should you upgrade your printer. If you're new to 3D printing, think twice before upgrading your printer. Learn how to use your printer first. And I mean really learn how to use it. Learn the ins and outs of le bed leveling, different filaments, using the heat bed, different temperatures. Get a good grasp on your 3D printer. So I see a lot of people all excited about getting their new ANET A8, A6, and they want to upgrade it immediately. They see all these great upgrades online, you know, on, on videos, and they think that it just kind of happens and that it's easy. Upgrading your printer is not an easy task. It's important that you have a certain bit of knowledge about 3D printing, for one, and also a good technical grasp on things. Just learning how the mechanics work, understanding you know how the software works, uh, understanding your temperatures and your extruders. There's a lot of things to know before you even get into upgrading your printer. I was one of those guys. I was one of those, I bought the, the ANET A6 and I wanted to do the, all the upgrades before I even made my first print. I'm glad I didn't go that route because I probably would have got disgusted with it right off the bat. It takes a while to do upgrades. Get your printer going and if you want to start doing some upgrades, do some printable ones, the mechanical ones, the mechanical type upgrades. For instance, on the ANET A8, there's a lot of frame bracing and, and things you can print out that work great, that are simple to implement to the printer. Okay, those are great first few upgrades. Some of the things that you don't want to implement right off the bat, auto bed leveling, don't do that right away. An extruder upgrade, don't do that right away. A Raspberry Pi with Octoprint, don't do that right away. A lot of technical stuff goes into those types of upgrades. I think it's very important that you get a firm grasp of how the 3D printer works. Now I'm going to tell you from personal experience, and I'm a technical guy, okay? I have a machine shop here, I fix cars for a little, you know, I, I do welding, I, I, uh, I'm a good electrician, I'm a good plumber, but this is a different deal. Then there's also things like the firmware, upgrading the firmware. For instance, right now I'm running uh, Skynet, which is a version of Marlin. If there's anything that I'm not adept at doing is, is fooling around with, with firmware. I'm really good at following instructions, thank God for that. So these ANET printers are great entry-level printers. They're cheap, you know, the, you can get the ANET A8 for probably about 150 bucks shipped. The A6 you can probably get for about 180 to $200 shipped. And they're great printers. And I'll tell you what, I've never had an ANET A8, but the ANET A6 really worked good right out of the box after I assembled it of course you know if you take your time assembling it making sure everything is straight and square and level and parallel and all those things and making sure your belts are nice and tight and you follow the instructions correctly you'll have a good printer right off the bat the a6 prints wonderfully right out of the box after you assemble it when it's assembled properly my advice to someone that's going to get something like the ANET A8 or the A6 is to assemble it, tweak it, you know, work on your bed leveling, make sure you get you get a good understanding of that. I mean, just basic things like getting your Z's on both sides level, you know, those are simple, seems like a simple thing to somebody that's been doing this forever. But when the motors are off on this, these motors can move freely, these two Z axes can move freely. That can be an issue. You know, one of the main things that I found with these printers, especially with these acrylic frames, is that they need a good firm base to sit on. Um, if you can, I'll show you my printer here. You can see that I actually have it on a 16 inch by 16 inch ceramic tile. And under that, I have these, so this, this gives it stiffness. This gives it a good firm base. Under that, I have these rubber isolation bushings on all four corners. So before you get auto bed leveling, 
I think it's imperative that you get a good firm base, plant this thing where it's not where you're not going to move it. If you're going to work on it, try not to move it because you're going to be doing bed leveling a lot. And then so I have it on the ceramic tile and then I have this is kind of like a tire tube material that I have under the contact points. There's two in the back, there's two on the sides and there's two here in the front. Okay, now what the rubber does is it it uh, prevents the vibrations of the printer from transferring into your print and also transferring into the cabinet. So the, uh, they're vibration dampeners is what they are. I think that's a very important thing to get good prints. If you choose to use an enclosure, that's a good upgrade. You could do that. I just want to apologize in advance for the wind noise. It's been very hot and I have the fan going here in the garage. No air conditioning in here. Thanks for sticking with me anyway. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I got a lot of work and time into this printer. And it's, it, and it's a labor of love, right? I enjoy, I enjoy tinkering. My wife doesn't enjoy it so much because it takes a lot of time away from her. These 3D printers are not bu like buying a, a color printer for your computer. You know, where you plop it on the desk, plug in the USB cable, and off you go. These are not like that. These are not consumer-friendly items. They're not to the point where Joe Schmo can buy a 3D printer, unless you want to spend $3,000. These are still at their infancy, and at this price point, you know, $180 price point, you have to expect some tinkering. You have to. I mean, really, look at this thing. Look what it does. Look what it does for $180. Look what this thing does. It makes usable parts. I mean, it's a it's a tiny little mini manufacturing facility right here on my countertop. It's an amazing thing. Now, granted, this one has got a lot of tinkering that has gone into it. You know, I've printed lots of parts for it. I've, uh, I've changed the extruder on it. I got automatic bed leveling. This is a second generation of automatic bed leveling. I had a inductive sensor, the cheap cube sensor on here before. You know, I've upgraded my power supplies. I've done a lot of stuff, but that's because I enjoy doing it. But there's been a lot of frustration along the way. I had a lot of frustration getting th uh, this extruder to work. Number one, I had a lot of frustration getting Octoprint to work, and it's still not working 100%. I'm still having a hard time getting the port forwarding working through two, two routers consistently, but Octoprint is great. So I'm rambling a little bit. I guess what I'm trying to say here is enjoy your printer. Learn how to print with it. Make some useful stuff. Make some fun stuff before you go upgrading it. I mean, you want to do a few physical, structural uh, upgrades that are printable from Thingiverse. That's great, you know, knock yourself out, do that. But um, if you're gonna start changing extruders and putting automatic bed leveling and octoprint and all these other things, get a good firm grasp on, on 3D printing basics. You know, using different materials, different temperatures, uh, bed leveling, get a good grasp on bed leveling, get a good grasp on the characteristics of your particular printer. I think it's very important. All right, guys, that's all I got for today. Maybe I went off on a little rant. I see a lot of people doing upgrades, and they really haven't even learned how to 3D print yet. I, I think that's a big mistake. I really do. So enjoy your 3D printer. Buy yourself an ANET A8 or an ANET A6. I'm going to have an, a couple affiliate links in the bottom. If you like this video, please subscribe. There's also an ANET A6 playlist right about here. Thanks for watching.